everybody. Welcome back. Sandra here, Plant Rich Sandra. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have a very special topic that I would like to talk about that, uh, talk about, and it is five different possible ways that you can transition from the standard American diet over to a whole food plant-based plan way of eating as Dr. Furman prefers to call it, and I agree with him, nutrient-dense, plant-rich. That is a much more specific name for being a nutritarian because it focuses on the nutrient density of your foods, which is much more important than just saying vague plant-based. Because you can call yourself a vegan or plant-based and eat Oreo cookies and Lay's potato chips because there's no animal products in those but they are not nutrient dense and they are not plant rich. So NDPR is a much better name for uh, your healthy way of eating as you are going into this. So I have five methods that I want to talk about. And the first one is possibly you might consider to be the easiest method and then going to the most dramatic method, but the final method will bring about the coolest results very quickly. So before I get started, this is something that a lot of people don't think to do before they begin their transition over from the standard American diet. And I admit I didn't do it either, except for one thing, which was weigh myself. But if you could take the time to go to the doctor and get some fasting blood work done before you even begin this, get those results in your hand of what your, the state of your well-being is before you begin. Take your weight, take other physical measurements, measure everything, and uh, check, uh, sorry, what was I gonna say, the other thing, take pictures, sorry, before you begin. I believe that in the long run, you will get a lot more gratification and satisfaction out of your progress if you can say, a week before I began, this, these were my stats. And here I am now, six months in, look at the difference. Look at my cholesterol, look at my blood pressure, look at my blood sugar, look at my weight, look at my measurements. You are going to feel a lot more momentum and motivation to keep going if you have physical results like that, hard copy in your hand of what you were like before you began. So that is just a recommendation. Most people don't think to do that, but I just want to recommend that to you based on my experience. I did not do all that. I jumped in out of fear that I had become a diabetic. I jumped in pretty quickly. The only thing I had was my, um, my weight when I began of 252 in 2012. And then when I began this, I was right at 227. I had lost 25 pounds by just giving up sugary drinks over the course of two years. So I have my weight and I kept digging around until I could get some old results of fasting blood work and it took a while to get some old ones together but I do remember that I had scary high triglycerides at one point. My cholesterol was high. My blood pressure was always borderline at the very high end of normal but it was right up there at it and I wish that I had, had had test results from just before. So just a recommendation. So five methods of transitioning. Method number five is called crowding out. And on this method, what you do is you say to yourself, I am not going to give up any of my beloved foods that I've been living off of now for years, but what I will do is I will begin every meal by eating healthy first. And then if there's any room left over in my tummy after I've eaten the healthy foods, a, a good salad or a nice bowl of compliant vegetable soup or some fresh fruit, then uh, I will, if there's any room left over, I will have standard American diet food, my whatever, my dessert or a piece of fried chicken or whatever, but I have to eat the healthy first. So the goal here is to crowd out the old stuff by eating the new, eating the healthy stuff first and hopefully there won't be any room left in your stomach for the unhealthy stuff because you'll say, well, I'm full now, so I don't. And you work toward getting rid of it, eliminating, reducing, and then eliminating 100% the standard American diet food at some point. I do want to say here 
that everything I'm about to say, except for the fifth method, is transitional. But the goal is to work towards 100% compliance at some point. 80%, 90%, 95%, 100%. 100% is the better of the percentages of becoming compliant. And you choose a method that you think will work for you, and if it doesn't work for you, then try a different method, but you are working toward that. Method number two, method number four, excuse me, is that you decide that eventually you will be 100% compliant, but you're going to do it one food component at a time. So say for a week or two weeks, you tell yourself, this week, I'm gonna give up red meat. I'm gonna keep everything else, but I'm just gonna give up red meat to begin with, and everything else remains the same. And then after a week, when you've given up the red meat, you say, now I'm going to give up my poultry for the next week or two. I'm going to eliminate my poultry, and I'm going to replace it with healthy alternatives. For example, for me, it would be the beans. And you don't limit yourself on the beans. You just say, I'm gonna give up my, I gave up the red meat, and I began replacing it with beans, and I was still eating some poultry, but this week I'm also gonna give up the poultry, gonna give up the pork, gonna give up my eggs, gonna give up my dairy, my cheese, and you give up, you replace one component, food component at a time. At some point, it will be salt that you will say, I'm, for this, now beginning this week, there will be no more salt in my diet. And then eventually, you will have replaced every bad component with a healthy option from our nutrient-dense, plant-rich way of eating until you have gradually become 100% compliant. How long you take to make your transition is up to you. If you to make your transition in two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, eventually you will get there and you will have everything replaced with healthy alternatives. Hopefully within three months you will be uh, at that point. The third method is that instead of replacing components, specific components, you replace a meal at a time. So you tell yourself, here in week one, possibly two weeks, we'll see how week one goes, I am going to replace breakfast with healthy alternatives. I'm not gonna be eating my bacon and eggs, my toast with butter. Instead, I have compiled a list of 10 breakfasts. I'm going to try them. And then if I like them, they will be part of my collection, my personal repertoire, my personal collection of nutritarian, whole food plant-based, nutrient-dense, plant-rich recipes that I enjoy, that I'm not going to feel deprived eating these 10 recipes for my breakfast from now on. And as I go through, I will continue to add new recipes like the tofu scramble, etc., to my plan. So that is, you do that for a week, and then, or two, and then you say, now I'm ready to switch out my lunch. And by the way, I wanna say, I don't, I, did, I meant to bring these over here and I did not do that. I'm not sure where they are right now. But if you were to get either straight up food from Kathy Fisher or the Eat to Live Quick and Easy Cookbook from Dr. Joel Furman, or both, even better, both, you're gonna find some very simple and effective and delicious recipes in both of those books. And if you go to straightupfood.com, Kathy has got several of her most famous and most popular recipes are available on her website for free. So now that we're talking about this level of transitioning, I wanna say that she has got some great breakfast ideas in her book, they both do. She has a recipe called tuna salad that is awesome for your lunch. You can eat the tuna salad. It's, it's like tuna salad, but it's T-U hyphen N-O. You can make tuna salad and eat it on Mary's Gone Crackers crackers, wasa bread, Ezekiel bread. There are many different ways that you can incorporate it. Some people will make their regular salad and they will put a couple of dollops of tuna salad on top and use it as their dressing. So there are lots of ways to do it. It has kelp granules in it, which gives you that little hint of tuna. 
that little bit of a seafood flavor to it. It also uses chickpeas, canned chickpeas, low sodium. Rinse them off, put them in, and that gives you the appearance of the tuna when you put it in your food processor. Speaking of food processors, tuna salad uses your basic food processor, like a Hamilton Beach from Walmart, the little $35 one, is perfect to make tuna salad. And most people have one of those at home. So it has celery in it. It has, it's a great recipe. It's very inexpensive to make and it's perfect for lunch. So then after a week or two of trading out your lunch for healthy options and you've collected, you have a collection of recipes that you've enjoyed, now time to switch out your dinner. You give yourself a week or two, then your snack for the day. Give yourself a week or two, Next thing you know, you're 100% compliant by switching over in that method. The next method is, I don't have a name for this, but basically on day one, you are ready to switch all of your foods out 100%, but you don't, you, you deliberately leave off the portion control aspect. So, you have your food ready to go. You have cooked things, vegetable dishes, salt-free, compliant, in the freezer, you have things in the refrigerator ready, your veggies are ready to go, you've got your fruit ready to go, you know what you're doing, you've got your healthy fats ready to go, you've got a variety of raw and unsalted nuts and seeds ready to go in your freezer, you have maybe an avocado or two ripe ready to go on day one, <clears throat> you've got some whole grains, you know whole grains that you are gonna be using and you've got some like Ezekiel bread in the freezer, you've used your Instant Pot to whip up some whole grains like amaranth and millet and barley and buckwheat and oat groats and you're ready to go. But you don't limit the amounts. You give yourself two weeks, three weeks to simply trade out the standard American diet food but no limits. You've got your beans, either you're starting out with canned or you have already pre-cooked some, they're in the freezer, but you're not limiting. And a lot of people do limit their beans, but you've decided, right now my goal is just to get used to the food and come to love this new food. So I'm not worried about portion control at this time. That is, in my opinion, a very effective method for people who feel that they're going to be overwhelmed from the get-go with trying to do everything perfect on day one. You won't have the dramatic weight loss, but you're gonna feel a lot better. After a week or two weeks, you're simply gonna feel better, even if you are not experiencing dramatic weight loss. Now I wanna get to the best way to do it, the toughest way, but the best way is to jump in feet first, 100% on day one. You've done your research. You know the vegetables and the fruits that you're going to, that you need to incorporate. Cruciferous, starchy, you know all that. You're ready to go. You've got your fruit ready to go. You've got some things in the freezer, some gently cooked vegetable dishes in the freezer and in the refrigerator. You've got frozen and fresh fruits ready to go. You know how you're going to use those frozen fruits to make fruit sorbet, etc. And on day one, and you've got your nuts and your seeds and avocado, and not only that, but on day one, you are ready to be 100% compliant even with portion control. You know what you need to do. You know that as an adult female, you're gonna limit yourself to one ounce of raw nuts and seeds and two ounces of an avocado or possibly two ounces of raw nuts and seeds and no avocado. One tablespoon of freshly ground flaxseed or combo freshly ground flaxseed and chia seed together. You know how you're gonna use it. You have one serving a day of your starch, which might be a whole grain or it might be a starchy vegetable like a sweet potato or a gold Yukon or another root vegetable like yucca. You have, you know that you have your mushrooms incorporated, your raw onions are ready to go. You've got berries ready to go. One serving a day needs to be a berry of your fruit. And when you begin on that first day, everything is ready to be 100%, even portion size. You are gonna see 
the most dramatic results using this method after just a few days, after a week, after two weeks, you're not only going to be feeling better, but you are going to be experiencing a dramatic drop in your cholesterol, in your blood pressure, in your blood sugar. So many things are going to correct themselves quickly if you follow this method. You're gonna feel better right away. People are going to be looking at you like, what have you been doing? Oh my God, tell me, tell me what you've been doing. So that method of the 100% is the best but it is very hard for a lot of people so I wanted to offer you today alternative methods the other four methods that you might want to consider if you are not at a humongous health risk right now and you are simply trying to head off at the pass any future possible illnesses then you will be better you can handle this in different ways you don't have to jump in 100% on day one so that's what I wanted to talk about in this episode, and I hope that this was helpful to you. And if you got anything out of this, I hope that you will give it a thumbs up and that you will subscribe and maybe share and hit the notification bell in the bottom corner down there so that you can get some, get notifications of when I upload new videos. Uh, I do wanna say that now this didn't happen to me, I, I really do need to point this out, but this has happened to a lot of my friends. I felt really good during my first week. I did not have, for some reason, any detox symptoms. You may have some detox symptoms. So you may not feel amazing right away. You may go through a week or two where you are feeling pretty bad, but keep in mind, what is detox? When you are getting rid of some of those heavy things in your system that needed to come out and when you switch over to the nutrient-dense plant-rich foods you may feel pretty bad for a few days because of the detox so keep that in mind but things will turn around after a while and you will begin to feel that energy is going to hit you for me it was like in the middle of the night I'm like I'm I have so much energy right now I what do I do I was not exhausted uh, and so that, that was for me, I did not experience a lot of detox. When you um, maybe start getting a little shaky because you are so addicted to sugar and so for a week or two you're you know, shaking as you begin to get all of that excess sugar out of your system, the chemicals, the, the toxins, the metals that don't need to be there, etc. So that could be a possibility for you too that you'll need to go through those before you begin to feel uh, the amazing feeling of being light and uh, I don't mean just physically but just getting all that gunk out of your system my migraines went away for me I used to have sciatica I had uh, Charlie horses right up till I began became a nutritarian and I had borderline high blood pressure as I mentioned and so so many of those things really pushed my momentum to keep me going again I'll go ahead and say goodbye Everybody have a great day and hope to see y'all again soon.